Right, so for this little instructional video, I want to focus on looking after the most important and expensive, if anything, item of tackle that we're all by when it comes to match fishing, and that is our sexy poles. And often, 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 I get lots of messages saying, I broke my pole, help me with this and all of that. And if I'm completely honest, what it comes down to is people not not using them correctly with the setup of the rollers, the pole socks, how they hold it, all that sort of thing. And that is what today's going to be about. I'm going to cover every little bit about holding, using and not breaking our sexy items of tackle. Right, so video I've done plenty of times before. And first up, of course, is roller placement and squiddle and how you want your rollers to be. How are we going to do it? Yeah, we're going to start off first now. So you can see first thing on my box, big, big wide, lovely shot. I've got my pole sock. Yeah, for me, I don't use my pole sock very often when I'm fishing. Yeah, it's just used to store my pole, often when I'm breaking down. But you can see how it is now. So the height of that pole, it's not getting pushed in it too much, it's just all lovely. The height it's sat, I'm going to focus on that a little bit more when I'm sat in my box. Positioning the rollers though, what we're going to talk about first, yeah, quickly, obviously we haven't always got a perfect bank, but you do the best you can. I mean, budget if it's really bad situation, if you've got a big hill, but if it's relatively flat, that's what I want to go through today, looking after the pole. So first roller we come to, yeah, immediately behind you, the position of that wants to be, I'm going to say probably a foot higher than my box. So if you look down my pole, in this case, that's probably sat about a foot higher than uh, the seat of my seat box. Yeah, lovely. And distance behind me, it is two and a half sections. Yeah, I've said this loads and loads of times. So you can see the very start of my number, three, four section, whatever you want to call it, the end of my pole there without a top kit on is where it is in my grabbing position, where I'm going to get it right next to my hand when I'm sat in my box. And you can see the roller is right in the middle. For me, it's my number five section, but that is one, two and a half sections. Yeah, always, always the same with your first roller. Yeah, two and a half sections never, ever changes. Always in that position as long as the bank lets you, of course. So that keeps it nice. Next up, exactly the same again. Today, what I've put on, I put 13 metres of pole on. Yeah, standard length that we're mostly going to fish. And with 13 metres, see if that's still right in there, in the right place. Position of this roller is again two and a half sections. So right on the join of my graphic section, me, what we all refer to as our 13 metres section, sort of, but between 11 and 13 metres. Um, that join there, that is where the next one goes. If I'm fishing up to 13 metres, yeah, if I go any further, if I want to go 14 and a half or 16, I might move that half a section further down. Just supports things because it is all about the balance, which I'm going to show you in a minute. Height wise on that one, so ideally what you're looking at is your tip just pointing down to the water. Yeah, you don't want your pole raised, you want it just pointing down into the water. Keeps everything smooth, less chance of bumping fish, just keeps everything flowing nicely. But again, the height of this one dictates where the end of my pole is on my leg. So I'm going to show you next thing I go to my box. So really, really simple. Say two and a half, two and a half as a basic. Try and get your pole as level as you can. Yeah, again, dictated to by the bank how level you can get it. But the more level it is with a slight dip means it's not rolling that way. It's not rolling this way. It stays exactly where you want it. And there's not going to be too much of a bounce, which I'm going to explain now when I'm sat in my box. Right, so sat on a box, you can see pole is exactly where I said I want it, where I'm going to grab it. Yeah, if I want to secure that because it's windy or whatever, it can go me sock with bit of a bend but not being forced still nice and comfortable but main reason i'm sat in my box obviously so i could show you how to use a pole but mainly so you can see where it is in relation to my leg you know what i mean massive 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 things when it comes to using pole rollers is people don't use the leg and i've said it loads of times before in videos this one this is your third roller yeah it sort of secures your pole makes everything nice and supported stops it flopping all over the place just keeps it nice very lucky andrew's not here because he'd be giggling like a child at this point right so um pole sat there i'm going to whack my top kit on as you can see all right in the right place yeah and immediately what i want to do as soon as i come to ship out my pole is it goes on my knee yeah so it's sat there on my knee and it's not a case of shipping like this yeah you see it lots and lots it's on my leg and all i want to do is push my pole along my leg yeah because it creates the balance yeah, this is the third point of balance of the pole as it comes off my rollers. So this is going to secure my pole when it comes off the far one. So as soon as that leaves that far roller, because it's already um, supported by two points, it's almost getting pushed down on my leg. There's no bounce whatsoever. Yeah, with them positioned how they are, two and a half and two and a half, there's no bounce. There's no chance of me having a little pot on, me bait flying all over the place. Everything's secured. It's as stable as it possibly can. So nice and simple, pushed on my leg, looking at where I'm going to go, and I can just keep shipping. Yeah, really, really, really nicely. Keep on shipping all the way till it comes to my end roller. And at that point, you can see my hands move back here. 
so my hand's supporting that bounce. But when it comes off this last roller here, you're just pushing down slightly on it, but not securing the pole, just holding nicely on it, and it stops that bounce of it coming off that last roller, and still I can keep things lovely, lovely and smooth all the way to where I want to go. And then I'm sat nice and comfy, and my other lug, other, other lug, other leg comes into it. So once I've had that last little bit, see, I come along, watch where I'm going, and now my left leg comes into it, and that's what supports my pole. I mean, it moves my right leg to my left leg. It's supported by the whole of my right hand forearm, keeping things just where I want it to be, and my left leg. I mean, my left leg is, if anything, what does the striking. So it's that little movement of your, of your left leg is how you're going to flick your egg, strike, whatever else. Your movement to your pole is imparted on it, predominantly by your left leg. Yeah, obviously you've got your hand here supporting and guiding it where you want it to go, but it's your left leg that does all the, the movement of your pole and allows things to happen nice and freely. So, all nice and sexy. When it comes to shipping back, same again, your rollers are there, ready to go. So in an ideal world, I definitely recommend the roller with the middle prong. It, it makes such a difference in keeping the... Um, what are we going to call it, almost the, the balance, the weight of the pole central on the rollers and really, really, really does help in windy conditions where I have this conversation so many times when it comes to spending money on a roller, it's massively worth doing because it looks after these massively expensive pieces of carbon in the poorer conditions that we go fishing in. But you can see straight onto the middle prong of my roller, I don't even have to look at it then. Yeah, I can look at you lot, keep my pole on my leg where I want it and what that'll do, it'll find the back roller on its own till I get to where I want it to go and we are good to go. And then we can just repeat that process three million times as we catch lots and lots of fishies. But they're the basic steps that it comes to looking after your pole. So lastly, as I said, in fact, what's worth touching on, for me, a pole sock's great for keeping it like that if I need to. But the main use for a pole sock for myself is whenever I'm breaking down short, like in that case, and you can see that's how I'm looking after it. That's how my pole sock works for me whenever I'm breaking down. I don't use it too much when I'm fishing at full length. Whenever I'm breaking down, that's where it comes into it. Another handy little tool to have whenever you're using a pole. So yeah, they're the basics. Please don't use your pole in the wrong way because as we said, they're really expensive and the last thing we want to do is break them.